respectful every uh, practitioners I'm for Today we would like to continue to practice to learn uh, how to uh, uh, understand Buddhism. Usually for the beginners, uh, as a teacher, uh, we will always encourage. So we usually start from understanding Buddhism, basic stuff. Although it's um, basics uh, for uh, Buddhist uh, practitioners, but we cannot uh, look down on the basics because we must know Shayamuni Buddha, uh, the peace Buddhism, has a very um, profound and deep observations and truth in there. It's different from religion, uh, commonly known in the world. This is the first thing we must understand. Uh, Buddhism education uh, is what we call education, not a religion. Uh, what, what Buddha is teaching is from wisdom, uh, high-level wisdom, profound wisdom. What, kind of, what does it mean by profound wisdom? Uh, everything that Shai Buddha says, what does it around surround? There is always a goal. What's the what's the goal? Is to help all beings to liberate from sufferings. Not just a simple, uh, a normal, you know, relief from sufferings, but you relieve from the ultimate suffering to achieve full happiness. That means you no longer have to suffer. It's not just for a temporal moment, but forever. Uh, today we practice Buddhism. Uh, it's not you are not a common people. If you're able to understand and accept Buddhism, because a uh, person with wisdom will select this path. Why we can't fully uh, comprehend the teaching? Because we all have illness, uh, we have troubles. Therefore, our um, wisdom cannot uh, be uh, realized. Uh, there are very uh, deep conditions that we have planted in many lives from the past. Only then we were able to even heard of the word Buddha, let alone understand, actually hear it. Uh, it's not easy to be uh, to practice Buddhism. They are, they have high wisdoms in there. Um, uh, do not uh, think uh, that uh, you know um, you know uh, everything is high all the big sutras like Avatamsaka uh, sutras or the diamond sutra you know all the big sutras they all start from small basics so, uh, because its content is uh, profound. So today we would like to learn about, uh, analyze about a uh, very important uh, lessons. What kind of lessons is that? First one. Oh. Today we are learning from Shaimani Buddha. Today we are like we Buddhist, right? We want to learn from him. Uh, uh, Shaimani Buddha is our teacher. So if you want to learn from our teacher, our master, what is the most important thing we should aim to learn from him first? Right? We need to have a have a goal. First, we need to learn how to be awakened. This is very important. Uh, awakening means uh, you're aware, you understand. But this aware is not just simply I, I, I'm, I'm aware. Because there are one condition before that, it's called right awakening. It's different. If you add uh, right, uh, this word, uh, the whole meaning is different. So what does it mean as right awakening? 
we must take our time to understand this. Nowadays, uh, a lot of uh, smart people, um, there are a lot of smart people, right? Talented people. Mm. Are there a lot of uh, wise people as well? Yes, well, that's right. Especially in uh, the modern uh, world, we have a lot of very, very genius, uh, like almost genius level of scientists. We have uh, talented scientists, talented engineers uh, who devise a lot of um, uh, innovations in tech sectors and scientific sectors, discoveries, uh, because we are in the era of technology. This is what defines our era. If you uh, do not follow the uh, this era, uh, you will get uh, kicked out of the the the, 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 the queue. You know, you you will be left behind. So that's why a lot. Of, it is a struggle for a lot of um, age aging people, uh, elder people, because uh, tech has been developed uh, in a speed that is uh, a bit uh, very fast, astounding. Like even. Like say last two years, you know, we never thought we would do this online, and and now can you imagine now we will conduct dharma ceremony and stuff without technologies, without internet, without computer, we're forced to use it, including myself, uh, venerable. Yeah. I'm forced to use it every day. Uh, so uh, sometimes uh, when we met, uh, uh, when I met those uh, young kids. I don't know, like uh, when I came across this young kid, uh, when he saw me struggling with phones, they uh, laugh at me, you know, like, you know, you like, even a kid knows how to operate a smartphone, so how can you guys, uh, how can you be uh, so clueless about it? Uh, I always kept you know, laugh at in this regard. It's like, you should be, in, you know, no more than me, so how come you're clueless about it? Uh, if you look at the Japanese um, news, uh, a lot of their temples and their uh, uh, and their uh, sankhas, um, they have uh, robots in the temples. Obviously, they dress them as a monk, monk, and they even sculpture one uh, uh, robots after a Buddha. And they are like uh, service robots. They can also talk about sutras. It's kind of like a Q and A, you know, like they allow you uh, to ask questions and answer for you. Uh, so if, like, in, for example, you have any issues, you can ask uh, this Buddhist Alexa uh, about your issues. Uh, ask for their guidance. As long as you uh, call the number, uh, you will be linked to the system, and that system is like a, you know, like a call center. Uh, so this is the level of uh, development in our technological era. In in future, even uh, the, the 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 role of monk will be replaced by robots and AIs. If you do not believe, try it. Truly. However, no matter how developed technology is, if it's not well used, it's not wisely used, it will always uh, cause more harm than good. A very, a very big trouble caused by technology, <laughs> mostly because it is destructive. Uh, it's uh, exploitative and destructive towards the nature. Uh, let's talk about human, among humans, among peoples. Uh, they talk about um, husband and wife, right? The closest group of family, unit of family. Nowadays, if you look at uh, couples, uh, do you think it's closer for husband and wife or closer for husband and iPhone? Or uh, wife and iPhone? Uh, some, I saw a case where, uh, you know, lay Buddhist, he's a guy and he has a family and his, if his wife is not home or maybe go out shopping something, it doesn't matter uh, even she's late. But when he lost his phone, he uh, threw into feet, his feet, and it's like, where's my phone and all that. So here's the little fun, um, not so normal thing as we, as we observed. But those people who devise this, like Steve Jobs and all that, uh, do you think those people do not have the smarts or do not have the wisdom? Uh, 
actually they do. Uh, those philosophers, those scientists, those uh, clergies, you know, those uh, religious workers, they are very smart. They should be. They are leaders of their communities. They are innovators. Uh, some of them might even be way above average. However, even though they have, they are very intelligent. They are very prestigious. Um, their their IQ is above average, way above average. But Buddha will not give them the title, the qualification, or as right awakening. So their wisdom, their smarts, their intelligence is not considered right awakening. Uh, not qualified, but we must understand why. Like these people has um, one of the top percentile of human intelligence, but they are not rightly awakened. In Buddhism, the word right, right view, right awakening, right thought, right speech is very, it's not easy to be obtained. Like if you want to actually achieve this level, it's not easily obtained by anyone. So how come their wisdom and intelligence are not considered as right, awakened? Very simple. Because their heart has not been freed from afflictions. Their heart is bound by the habits, desires. They are wise, they are smart. But they have not severed the afflictions. They have not purified their heart and mind. They are still entangled with things and people, you know, like you right, I'm wrong, and all that conflicts and stuff. Uh, they still have hatred, greed, ignorance, and arrogance, especially in arrogance. On top of that, they have wandering thoughts, uh, discrimination or prejudice and attachment to things or people. They have selfishness attached with desires of amassing profits and prestige. No matter how capable their mental faculty is, it's not rightly awakened. That's why we understand, from here we understand how important to a right awakening is. A person who chant Amitofo, to be honest, is a lot, but how many actually made it to Pure Land from this earth? Because they haven't achieved the level of right awakening. A lot of people think of um, Amitabha Buddha has uh, wondrous uh, fortunes. They will bestow a lot of fortunes. They came for that, but they have not uh, seen the awakening side of it. And the whole core of right awakening is about pure heart. It's about your heart, state of mind. It's a state of mind pure and clear from afflictions, from clouded judgments. Is your heart pure? If your pure, if your heart is pure, it, your your wisdom is crystal clear. That means you pierce through things very clearly, uh, without cloud, the judgments. Only then it's called right awakening, because a pure heart nurtures this kind of wisdom that is able to awaken you to the reality of everything. That kind of wisdom, that kind of use of this wisdom is called right awakening. The standard of right awakening is different from the, uh, from the, uh, how to say, it is, uh, it is only Buddhism. It is only available in Buddhism or available only under the teaching of uh, Buddha. Um, because all six realms, all being six realms, heavenly or in, in human or anything, they are, as long as they are in six realms, everything they see, everything they understand are not considered right awakening because of the reason we mentioned, the, the, the afflictions. Um, today you chant Amitabha, same thing happens. Uh, it all relies on pure heart. A pure heart 
uh, Amitofo that comes from a pure heart is very powerful. So what are we trying to learn from Buddha, Chayamuni Buddha, our original teacher, is to gain, the first step is to achieve right awakening. Only when we are rightly awakening, we can truly understand how to navigate out of this suffering. Without awakening, without right awakening, we can't get out of this puzzle. If we want to go to pure land, which is liberated from that puzzle of sufferings, because uh, we can't go there because we are not letting it go of the affliction that bound us here, of the attachments. As long as you are within the level of right awakening, only then you are qualified to be liberated from cycles of life and death, uh, liberated from the sufferings to the happiness. Otherwise, uh, departing from this principle, even though we're doing the same thing, chanting Amitabha or worship to the Buddha or listen to the Dharma, it's all about fortune rather than true merits that are able to bring you to liberations. So, it's all about the heart, or we call it the heart and mind. Uh, this is a, a very uh, concise, uh, short, simplified summaries of um, right awakening. When you hear right awakening, or in Chinese, 正觉, it means pure heart. Mm. Right awakening equals to pure heart. Pure heart means unmoved by the phenomena that happens to you outside. Whether it be people or things or calamities or anything, you're unmoved. Only then you are considered as pure heart. If one who achieved the pure heart or right awakening in Buddhism, what does, uh, what is the title we confer to these people? If you achieved right awakening in Buddhism, in this educational system, what are, what are the status you will confer to if you achieve right awakening? We must be clear on that. It's a, uh, also a terminology, right? Chapter 1, terminology. A very important terminology to be used. There is oh, kind of like a titles as like university that, conf that was conferred upon the team. And this title is called uh, Arahat. If you have achieved awakening, uh, so if you achieve right awakening, you will call arahant. Just like today, when you uh, cultivate uh, the study uh, in uni for a certain course towards a degree, uh, when you graduate uh, the first level of this study, it's called bachelor degree, bachelor of whatever course you study. So Arahat is the same in Buddhist education. Arahant, Bodhisattva and Buddha are the same. This tree is the common uh, titles that we convert to upon achieving a dif different degree of awakening. If first step is right awakening, you call Arahant. Why? How does one call Arahant? Because you are no longer be uh, twisted in views and ideas. You see things clearly. Your greed, hatred, and ignorance does not exist. It's like it will not come out. It's clear. And Arahant do not have entanglements with people and matters. Because Arahant do not attach to the notion of the body is yourself. That means no more ego attached to bodies. So what does Bodhisattva mean? We will talk about this next time. So this um, first level of uh, scholarships in uh, title in uh, Buddhist education, uh, I hope it's clear for you guys. Uh, the best word to define Arahant is pure heart. Pure heart means right awakening. Why is it pure? Because they no longer have erroneous view and ideas. That means it's no longer twisted, no longer biased. They have no hatred, they have no greed, they have no ignorance, they have no afflictions. And they do not entangle with peoples and matters because they no longer attach with the self. From here, we learn that 
and experience that hopefully Buddhism and his education uh, the Buddhist education system is actually different from a religious education and secular education that means both the we call, we call religion and the secular that we are going through right now the world education so what do we actually learn from Buddha we must be clear in that regard Buddha told us we learned uh, through Dharma well, we will learn the Dharma of truth realization of truth uh, that means right awakening only when we um, learn the ways to achieve right awakening we can solve the problem fundamentally because of the right awakening we will be truly liberated from the pain that plague us forever and no longer going through all this again and again and again and again because when you learn truly learn truly listen to buddha's word and truly use your ability to learn uh, you would achieve, uh, achieve uh, liberation uh, that's the first step uh, for example if you look at our world pain and pleasure right if there is pain there's always pleasure if there's pleasure it always follows by pain in pure land there's called ultimate bliss for a reason because they only have uh, real bliss uh, instead of having a pain following around but over here we have a lot of pain that follows the pleasure from the perspective of pain and pleasure the most obvious easily observed um, part of suffering that we have to go through we start from ourself our current uh, environment including myself uh, venerable himself the living environment that you live nowadays no one can avoid life and death they cannot avoid birth age illness and death can you avoid it? No. Right? And on top of this four, we have sufferings of not getting not getting what we wish for. What we love, we can't get them. What we like, we can't get it. Uh, and then the sixth one is our loved ones pass away, uh, the, the loved one leaving us. Uh, there is a case where in this in this form of suffering of loved one leaving us there is an old old lady or old man for god um he lie on the bed dying and when he died he opened his eyes he leave his eyes open so he's not going in peace uh, this is a, a lady old lady when she passed away her eyes keep looking at one direction one place because she could not let go of her most uh, beloved granddaughter so this is another type of sufferings even until death and then we have suffering of encounter someone you dislike uh, so all these combined with the suffering of five skanda all these are eight sufferings of life no one can be escaped from here uh, these are the eight sufferings that we all have to go through every day so does Buddha have any way to help us to get out of this? Buddha told us if we practice Buddhism, if we practice uh, the, the path he laid to us, all right, um, which is right awakening, we already just the first step, right? Right awakening, we can be free from these eight sufferings. Like for example today the cultivative group cultivation group we have some of us are um, how to say uh, aged uh, rich um, middle age and above or uh, venerable men elder age like 70 60s uh, age of 60 or 70 and above uh, we think about does Buddhism help us to uh, 
relief or liberate from this uh, phenomena of uh, age of illness. To be honest, if we truly cultivate the teaching, if we truly um, understand the teaching and use it, you do not need doctors and medicines, yet your ailment will be recovered. There are cases like that. Why? What's the reason? Including myself, we should think about it and reflect on this. What are the reasons? Because they have realized the truth. Uh, you know, before we realize the truth, we keep asking, how did the illness come from, right? Uh, beyond the medical, the physical observable part, I'm talking about how did it arise, come into being? And how, what are the conditions that led to this illness to develop and spread? And what is the consequences and effect from this illness in general? And Buddha can tell us we can avoid illness. Human can actually avoid illness. People can avoid illness. But we need to know why. Why do we have sickness? Why do we have death? Why do we have, oh, sorry, why do we have sickness? Why do we have illness um, and old age? Why do we have these sufferings? Because all these um, illness, uh, the root of it is from our wandering thoughts that keeps generate, regenerate, regenerate the same conditions that lead us into illness. So if we use a more uh, common term, uh, we're thinking, uh, how to say, we're thinking everywhere. We're thinking left, right, up, down. We're always thinking. We never stop. We never rest. We're not um, honest. In the sense, our mind is not honest. It's not the monkey in our mind keeps jumping and jumping and jumping one after another. Therefore, Buddha told us, as long as you have wandering thoughts, even the um, sage uh, doctor come down or some cultivate uh, people or sage doctor like Hua Tuo in China is like very, very good doctor who heal a lot of ailment. He can't treat your problem, this kind of problem, the illness. In uh, talking about this Mr. Hua Tuo, uh, we talk about uh, talk about ancient China medical history. Uh, back in the before the Qing, Qing dynasty unite the China, um, there was a person behind the engineering of unification. It's called Mr. Qing, Duke of Qing. Uh, you know who treat this um, such an important figure in Chinese history, Mr. Hua Tuo, uh, Doctor Hua Tuo. Maybe not him, I think. Yeah, sorry, he's in Han, uh, Three Kingdoms era, sorry. There was another very good doctor, but he could not treat his illness. Because he kept thinking, because wandering thought, he keeps thinking about Ill illness. His mind keeps generating the condition of illness. If our wandering thought is not, uh, is blocking us from, you know, return to the pure state of mind, uh, we will always be ill. Uh, in current condition of six realms, or in our realm, life and death, life and death, life and death, uh, it all comes from wandering thoughts. The six realms arise from wandering thoughts. So Buddha in Avatamsaka Sutra, Flower Adorn Sutra, uh, all beings have the wisdom and virtues of the thus come one. There's another title for the Buddha. However, due to wandering thoughts, discrimination, and attachment, they could not realize it. Sorry, the attachment should not be there. Um, however, due to wandering thoughts and discrimination, they cannot realize it. So the point is, he has pointed out the roots of our illness uh, in the grand scheme, like life and death and all that, um, as in this one sentence. Using a life example that just happened in this decade, Venerable Master Hai Xian that just passed away in 2013, 
he's lived up to 112 years old uh, since Qing Dynasty, end of Qing Dynasty. He can climb the trees at the age of 112. The year he he he, he went to Pure Land, he still can pass, pa climb the trees. He can do all the rough work. It's a farmland, by the way. It's not just a city. Even a 40 years old could not do that. But he did all this by himself. 2013. At the age of 112. Even you ask some of the young people nowadays to do all this in one day. The volume of the chores that he has to do in his farm near the temple is a lot. Yet he can do it. How did he achieve this level of health? His heart is pure. That's why he can do that. How come his heart is pure? Because he always used Amitofo as the object of his thoughts, no longer allowing any other stuff to mix in. So his heart is pure. He has on, his heart only has Amitofo. Hence, it's pure. Because it's one thing. As long as your heart is pure, illness will not have effect on you. It is a way to reflect for us, especially myself. It's true. Therefore, uh, today, we always say, I'm ill here, I, you know, I caught a cold and stuff like that. To be honest, beyond the body, physical one, is actually our thoughts as well, our mind. Because if we put our energy and mind on, not on illness, on cultivation, and in terms of us, Amitofo, we focus on Amitofo, our mind is pure and focused, then we no longer fall you. Truly, as long as you have a pure heart, if we look into the Tripitaka, uh, in the Tripitaka, when we open up, if we look into all that um, records from Buddha himself, uh, did he mention any Buddha for you and for Sikh in their original state? Do they appear you and aged in their original state? No. If you look at uh, which Bodhisattva, you know, the student of Buddha, a chief student of Buddha, also for you? No. Have you heard Guan Yin, Bodhisattva Guan Yin, for you in the middle of his uh, Dharma? Did he take an MC from the, the, the Dharma uh, talk because he got a cold or headache or a fever? No. <laughs> Did you see any uh, uh, sutra that say, uh, uh, Buddha, Bodhisattva, Guan Yin, Siddhikaba, uh, Manjushri, they force you? No. Even Arahan does not grow you at age. To be honest, they do not need, they are no longer bound by this, what, what we call it, the worldly law of life and death. They have been liberated. They liberate themselves. To be honest, it's not fake, it happens. But where, how do we do that? What's the reason of them achieving that? Buddha and Bodhisattva has thoroughly realized the truth of this universe, how it came to be in all these conditions. Uh, so, once they understand that, they immediately follow their true nature. No longer, they, they do not use thoughts, right? Because there's no wandering thoughts. They f everything they do flows directly from their Buddha nature, true heart pure heart. So everything they do, do not have pretensions. They do not need to pretend. They're real. And we know that being natural is the healthiest thing in the world. Right? We all eat natural, we sleep on natural environment and all that. So nowadays, the technology is very um, advanced. However, the cause of this advancement is the destruction of the nature, of the environment. If you look at this earth right now that we live in, it's already sick, gravely sick, gravely ill, because we keep destroying it. If we look nowadays in this COVID pandemic times, it gets more and more serious or more sporadic. I mean, it's more contagious. It keeps evolving, mutating, because our heart is not, not pure.
All this COVID, all this pandemic, why does it mutate? It mutates in accordance to our heart, in accordance to our thoughts. If our thought and heart turns pure, turns focus on pure stuff, wholesome, I can tell you, you will no longer be affected by them if our heart is pure, clean. If you look at uh, Pure Land, uh, is, there, is there any uh, sutra that says uh, Amitra for uh, 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 Did they say any pandemic happened in Pure Land? Or in the land of the Buddha? No. Because Pure Land uh, is comprised of people uh, who has an environmentalist at, high, at heart. All the residents of Pure Land are environmentalists. How? Because their heart is pure. So they purify the environment. However, in our world, why is it such a, in such a state, state? Because we are polluting them with our wandering thoughts. The root of, uh, cause of our illness uh, is because of our wandering thoughts, discriminations and attachments. It came from there. If you want to be healthy, we must cultivate this pure heart. To start cultivating the pure heart for right awakening, we need to start letting it go of attachments that we have strongly adhered to. Let go of any situation, environment, adverse or favorable. In case of adverse conditions, something that causes us unhappy, we let go. We need use Amitofa to replace it. Once you do that with the habit, your heart gets purified further and further. Hence, your health gets better. And the problem of us uh, in Buddhist teaching is we are not listening to the Buddha's advice. We're not putting it in our heart. Yeah. We come here to attend the sessions. A lot of people might say, I'm busy, I have a lot of works, uh, I have a lot of chores or family business to adhere to. A lot of excuses sometimes. To be honest, sometimes in this world, uh, other than cultivation, cultivating Amitabha's name in our heart, nothing else you do can be brought to the next one. Very few people in this world can live 100 years old. Even you reach 100 years old is nothing to eternity. In this tiny speck of our existence, in this universe, our existence is such a tiny speck. Why aren't we doing something that will exchange for something bigger and infinite, instead of clinging to something that cannot last? True. It is like that. We must listen to the Lord, uh, to Buddha's name, Buddha's uh, teaching, because he's been there. If we do not listen, we will still cling to this entanglement, we get entangled in these afflictions. Only from a pure heart, the heart free from all this selfishness and affliction and entanglement can nurture a true wisdom that leads you to the right awakening. However, on the other hand, if the heart is not pure, if our mind is not pure, our heart is not pure, even though we are wise, we are smart, Buddha, Bodhisattva will not award comfort to us, comfort our wisdom and smart as the labor of right awakening. It's not. Because person who attain right awakening and arahant do not get bound by life and death. It's called it the state of cessation of life and death. Nirvana. Since you have transcended the uh, sixth realm, uh, 
No longer, uh, how to say, since we achieve right awakening through pure heart, uh, life and death is not a problem. All the affliction comes from the polluted heart. Mm. If we get through the issues of life and death by achieving right awakening, that life and death is a small matter already. What about the rest? Nothing else can trouble you anymore. Even life and if we have solved the problem of life and death, that means we're no longer bound by it. Everything else is petty, small. I mean, everything else is not a problem, no problem, you know. That's what we want from Buddhism. Only then we can be happy. To do that, to achieve that, we need to start following his teaching, his education. He's our teacher. However, if we treat Buddhism as religion, we're using a, a, a mindset of you know worshiping religion towards Buddhism. Dogmatic approach. We can uh, never uh, achieve right awakening, which brings us towards the ultimate happiness. That means we cannot stop the suffering. Because it's lost. Uh, religion itself, the 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 the, the nature of religion, worshiping and all that is lost. Call it superstitious, in a way. Why is it superstitious? Emotion is the basis of religion. In Chinese, there's two words. Emotion, sensibility. I mean, uh, 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 sorry, sorry, emotion. Yeah. In other words, we call it blind faith. Buddhism do not encourage blind faith. They use rational clear, precise thinking. They do not encourage blind faith. And most religion, they use the blind faith to tie a leash around its follower and worshippers. And the more devoted you are from that emotion, you are more uh, called the real devoted sincere uh, worshippers. The more lost you are, the better it is. They label it as devoted. And it's a leash. So that you can't escape. If you, if you try to see the other religions, there are over a lot of evangelists that are trying to pull disciples into the, you know, they are part of that religion that use the evangelist approach. Uh, they use that mindset uh, to uh, get students. And then there are cases where it's very well known, you know, if you don't believe in me, you go to hell. They are part of that. They always uh, use that kind of approach, using a leash on the people. And all they want is something like a devotion, they pray all the time, you uh, give um, uh, some sort of sums of donations to them. They are, this is a common problem among religions nowadays. Uh, I'm real, you're fake, uh, holy than thou. Uh, but to be honest, in the end of the day, None of them knows what is happening. None of them solve the real problems. Hence, it's fake. Buddhism is no, never like that. Buddhism is not, not about followers, how many people come and follow me. Why? Because it's all about education. Education is about teacher and student, disciples and master. In a, there's a very important term. There's only disciple who seek answers from the master, never heard of master who come in front of you and want you to be their student. 
What does it mean? We'll talk about it next in last session. So only students seek answers from master. So seek teachings from the teacher. There's not a, a teacher should not come to you in front of you and tell you to learn from me. So therefore, going back to the point, we need to start with right awakening. To be rightly awakened, we need to have a pure heart. We need to learn and practice a pure heart. Without a pure heart, what you learn, what, without pure heart, everything you learn in Buddhism is just uh, planting a seed of Buddhism in future. It does not have immediate effect on your current condition. It will not be used to help you to elevate your current condition. So therefore, Shakyamuni Buddha's appearance in this world is just to help you to liberate the sufferings. And the first level you have to go through is life and death. And to go through, liberate from life and death, you need to start with right awakening. To start from right awakening, you use the pure heart. Pure heart, in our terms, we use Amitabha Buddha's name to cultivate pure heart. Uh, this is a, a very simple uh, overview on what we seek, should seek in Buddhism. Next session, I uh, look forward to learn more with you uh, about Buddhism, understanding Buddhism. Uh, I also like to announce uh, this Friday, I also like to uh, practice um, talking uh, Siddhikarpa, do the, uh, the original vow of Bodhisattva Siddhikarpa, Dijang. Uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning before we um, dedicate the merits uh, in 8 p.m. I think mm. before the um, before we uh, dedicate the merit around 8 p.m. we have a, a session dedicated for the sutra so now back to this understanding Buddhism that's it for today I hope uh, everyone could uh, cultivate pure heart uh, take, put in effort uh, because the only person who benefit from doing this is yourself. Uh, I hope that you can have something to carry home. So have a good evening to everyone, to you. And may you uh, be prosperous and healthy. Thank you so much, Amitofo. Uh, let us dedicate our merit. Uh, let's join our palms. We we'll use English. Uh, use your own name uh, after me. May I uh, use the merits accrued from now? Uh, me, a student of uh, Buddha, Dylan. Uh, would like to dedicate the merits of listening to Dharma to all karmic creditors so that they may be born in pure land. Also dedicate the merits to the beings of ten directions and also dedicate to the world peace. May the calamities uh, be turned from big to small, small to none. Now we're back to the term. Uh, repay the four kindness above, relieve the suffering of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire to invoke the body heart, uh, cultivating the teaching for the rest of this life, so we can be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Am Dovo. Chi